Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Shane Yordan. A South African schoolboy decided to take it upon himself to try and make a difference in the form of a written poem. My poem is titled The South African Perception as it contrasts the differences between a South African schoolboy and a South African schoolgirl's life and the challenges they have to face in doing so. But before I'd like to begin, I'd like to make you aware that my poem does indeed make reference to sexual abuse and violence. So without further ado, I present to you The South African Perception by Jane Yordan. Part one. My eyes fight off the light as the alarm clock rings. Yet I'm able to get out of bed, not worrying about general everyday things. I clothe myself in grace, grateful of another day, plodding along from place to place. I'm 17, yet I feel as though I'm old enough to count for myself. All I gotta worry about is my future wealth. Going to school, it's just another ordinary day for me. What more is there to be? All I see are the boys conversing. What topic would they dwell on today? Sports, cars, just to name a few of the array. But you see, my consciousness tells me to stay away. Why? Because I walk straight into a conversation about how she, how she, I'd rather not say. I remain quiet in disbelief. The words perpetuating through my mind, my mother has taught me better. Yet another conversation goes by. I can't understand why, why? My silence agreeing with the vigorous wording. I remain facetious. What will I do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm just scared of being that guy taught from a young age to hold my tears in. Cowboys don't cry, do they? Of course not. So why stop? All these thoughts shooting through my brain. What is happening? Am I going insane? No, male. You just forced into a train filled with catcalling, degrading, objectifying, raping. Yet I remain. Rape. Why would it bother me? It isn't happening to or affecting me, don't you see? I don't want to be here. I don't want women to live with this dehumanizing fear. God, please guide me, like Mother Mary. These women belong to a family. Yet, yet. Part two. I wake up, my eyes filled with tears. My mind is overwhelmed with fears. I can't go another day worrying about everything. I clothe myself according to what society deemed to be acceptable and safe. Everywhere I go, I plod along because I need to. I don't have any other choice. Observant of every single thing. I am 17, yet I feel as though I am unsafe. I cannot go anywhere alone. All I have to worry about is if I am next. Fortunately, I get to school successfully again. I feel safe. What a disgrace. All the boys are staring at me. What are they thinking? I close myself in my arms as they surround me, coming closer and closer. My heart pounds and my consciousness tells me to run, yet I stay. Why? I froze, my limbs unable to function properly. My silence the cause of their horrendous wording. What is happening to me? My parents and friends warned me, yet people walk by, fully understanding the scintillating nature of these masculine figures that surround me. I think of an escape. What am I to do? I cannot run, they will catch me. I cannot scream, they will stop me. I cannot fight, they will beat me. I can, I can do nothing anymore. It's too late. Yet I still have the audacity to think it's my fault. Maybe it's what I wore. Cowboys, what they're taught to be, as I fight to get them off of me. I'm left lying, left laying, hopeless on my own classroom floor. As the men sit back, stare in a door. Rape, not just a word, but now a part of my life. I am never safe, not at home, not at school, the post office, restaurants, no, where. Yes, I am 17, but my age doesn't mean much, as I remember to scream. No, stop. Yet they go on as my purity gets infiltrated by blood. My life ruined forever, because just as they finish, my heart is brought to a halt. Like my dreams of being a mom. A doctor. Anything but this. A knife pierces through my skin as I am left to rest hopeless as a result of being another one of the world's females. Femicide takes the life of another innocent one of South African's woman. Thank you.